Chuck, uh, were you there yesterday when uh, your colleague played? No. Were you were halfway. You, you, you were halfway. You were halfway. Good. Uh, let's go to, you know, this is one of my most favorite parts. <laughs> Right now, yeah. Now, not only it takes more time, but imagine if I ask you to, from here to there, to run in half a second. You will need more energy, right? Right? To get there quicker. Now, if you're going to put a lot of energy there, that energy will translate into not only time but force, right? So, which means that you will have a harder time to control your leggero if you're doing this. If your fingers are so high. So what I do is this. See that? My fingers are already on the keys, and I use the motion of my arm. I, I practice this. Now, avoid lifting fingers. This is, there's a physical component to it. Once you lift a finger, you trap a tummy. What does it, it means is that your, your wrist starts to lock. Right, you see that? Now, if you lift any of those, you're going to lock your wrist. You won't be able to use it to transfer the energy. Now, <coughs> I'm a lazy pianist. I like to use energy. So look how I'm, I'm just using the ball of my, don't think of five fingers. Think of one hand, right? Think of one hand. So when I put this, when I play those, you see my, my one hand played it for me. I didn't even lift fingers that are not <coughs> in use. Right, are resting on the keys. And then, I use the momentum of my arm as I go there to place those other fingers. See? And then the momentum of my hand will just take that. Then same thing. Okay. Now look how sparkling that was. And <coughs> if you want a leggero that sparkles, you cannot play here. Yeah, more co close to the fingernails. You know how, how that sparkle, but see, if you play here, it doesn't sparkle, right? And so what you want to do is stay close to the keys, right, without lifting the fingers, without lifting the fingers, I'm already kind of on the keys, because the key will go up on its own, see, you just have to leave it, it will go up on its own, so by lifting your finger after you play the key, It's a lot of energy wasted. So you, let's practice that. Like, do this and <coughs> notes that are not, fingers that are not playing, rest it. So you rest the other fingers that are not playing and then transfer there. Yeah, lift, rest it. Yeah. <coughs> Good. Good. Energy is directional. Yeah, that's what it is. Energy is directional. So yes, you can pull towards you. Right? Now here you can push away from you. See how I. In that way, my arm, see my arm moves in a circle. See, they move in a circle naturally. That's where I'm getting all of my momentum and energy. So that this doesn't have to work hard. This is the wave. These are my surfers. You don't see a surfer with a big wave in their back paddling, right? No, they just like stand and look pretty with their California bleach blonde hair, right? So you, you want. Right, 
from that I top position will land there without me even lifting that second finger. You from but yeah. without lifting it because if you lift it that time that arch will, that space will cost you a lot of time. Then you would struggle. You don't want to struggle. That's right. Feel that? Now, the second finger is now the only finger you can prepare. So look where I, look where I land the second finger. Much more inside, so that the fourth fingers are and those three fingers are already ready. Good. Now, don't use any extra finger work. Just from the wrist. From the wrist. And that's what that meant. That's right. You see? Good. And then after you you've learned to do that, right? Yeah. You're going to to use the energy that's from there, you're going to connect it and then you rotate it out, up and around. Good, touch. Good, now, look at your ulnar deviation, ulnar, uh, wrist deviation, right? Wheels. I, okay, I have a friend in Vancouver that owns a Ferrari. Oh, I drove it once. It was amazing. The wheels were just like very well aligned, close to the ground, close center of the gravity. Now, what happens when a car, you're driving in a highway and one wheel is slightly misaligned? It starts to shake. It starts to shake. Now, think of your wheels, right? These are your wheels. This is, this is your car here, or, right? Think of the alignment of that. If you do this, second finger is your judge. Because that's the finger that you point with, right? Now, if you deviate that, you're going to start losing balance. And it starts to wobble too much, right? So if you look at my hand, see, my second finger is kind of more aligned. Now, when I rotate, you see, there's a limit. I don't over-rotate. Because if I over-rotate, look at this. Not only that, that it over-rotates, look at where the thumb is too far away from me. So you want to...
with the up up because it's a up motion, which means that you're lifting your arm weight away from the heat, right? Naturally, you have a natural poison since you don't have to heat yourself. This will be naturally heavier, then those will be naturally lighter. So up, up, down, up, up, up. Yeah, 
that the pin is a maximum of sound. When you reach that threshold of maximum, it starts to sound banging and percussive, right? So you gotta know where that threshold is and learn to play, like what I did in, the, in Prokofiev, remember? We did the, the loudest sound first so that you know your threshold and you know how to plan from within that threshold. Otherwise the piano, the piano will tell you, and each piano is different. I've played on uh, Hamburg sideways that can give, 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 give. Not all pianos can do that. Yeah, you have to, even a, a, a Hamburg sideways that's already broken in, it still has this maximum threshold. Right, I played it, yeah, were you there in the Tchaikovsky? I played Tchaikovsky show with Melissa and Brooks. I think you were there with the teacher. Yeah, yeah that piano can give, 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 but that piano also has a threshold. So I have to, I have to be very careful not to bang on that piano, right? Open your ears on that one. Very good. That's what friend. Now, before when you played this, this was already in triple F. <laughs> Not because you already reached your maximum there. Now this one, just that's right. Good. Now, how do we make that sound even more prettier? Is your concept of sound going down or forward? It must be forward. It must be forward, but you were thinking down, right? Now think this. Forward and go out of it. Your fingers, right? There's an attack surface, right? This one, there's an attack surface. So if you get stuck there, right, on that surface, you are going to inadvertently keep the energy stuck down. But if you do this, slide it or make it move forward, it's gonna make the sound rounder. Whoa. Ah, how did that feel? It sounds it's warmer. Now, voicing. What do you want to voice? Huh? Yeah. Now, what you, when you do that, when you put the weight in there, release, uh, uh, remove the weight from the inner voice and just concentrate on the extremes between here and at the top there. Now this is the trick I, I do. Upper voice, softer the inner voice there. Yeah. Just, and then the second time, highlight the inner voice. Put the weight in the middle of your hand on the second finger. Yeah, like this, I'll show you. So the first one. Slightly, but you're so 
music or it's almost like imperceptible, this technician, but I can still hear it. Right. I can still hear it, sorry. So you want, sorry, you want to change maybe the movement of down, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, 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 down, up, 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 down, to sound labored. You want to understand what I'm saying? You don't want it to sound labored. You want it to sound like as if you're just having the time of your life. Okay. Yeah? Try. Try from here. So this is you went up. So see, the timing, so that, uh, with this one, my, my, you might not be able to, to do it right now, but I'm going to plant the seed. Practice your left hand again. Da, up, up, da, up, up. Try it. So, up, up. And, and don't worry the pinky because the arm will play that. So, okay, so don't try to connect too much the fingers, right? Let the arm take it there. Da, If it doesn't feel good, it won't sound good. Okay. Right? Does it feel good? No, it doesn't feel good. It won't sound good. It will sound a bit labored. So you want to just... Or, I have two hands. Just a thought. You want this to sound. 
sound so easy kun anima. When there's a slight um, blockage in the energy, it does feel labored. And of course, we're like, oh, it sounds loud and it sounds energetic, but does it, it sounds labored, right? On an international competition, that usually separates you from others because uh, th that will separate you know, performers. You know, like uh, when I was adjudicated in Seattle, the National Air Competition, I always feel like, okay, that felt easy, the music just flowed. Or that, that a little bit labored. No. But it doesn't mean that you're less or more or less musical. It's just that you're, you have so much musicality that if you stifle it, it will translate into tension and hard sound. But if you learn to release that tension, or, 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 re, uh, or, or not, not release the tension, but re-choreograph it in such a way that the energy is flowing, then, oh my god, your, what, or your musicality that's already out, it's going to multiply 20, 30 times. It's going to flow. So re, uh, rethink that left hand, yeah? sound good, right? It has to feel easy. Right? So the right hand will thank you for it later. That's for that. Good. Um, All the time? Yeah. Just a few more, a few more, just a second. Okay, now, this one you're rushing. Are you aware? Uh, no. Why are you rushing that? We, we rush because of crap energy. I don't like to move that.